For today's lesson, please have your book open to Chapter 3, page 132, and also have your spiral available. I'd like you to copy down some of the examples that I'm going to have in the video today to put into your spiral. To review um, from last year some of the terms or the vocabulary that you need to know for this chapter. First part of chapter three is adding algebraic terms. Well, what is a term? A term, a term is a number, a variable, a product of numbers and variables, or the quotient of numbers and variables. Some examples. Well, the whole number two is a term. It also happens to be a constant. Um, 7p is a term. It's a product of a number and a variable. It could just be the variable m. It could be a decimal in front, num numerical coefficient with a decimal, like 35 hundredths x squared y is a single term. Or it could be something that has a fraction, one-half piece. So what do you think would go in this next blank here? Is a mathematical word for one term? Well, if you know something about what the prefix mono means, you probably guessed correctly that a monomial is the mathematical word for one, mono meaning one. Is the addition or subtraction of two unlike terms? Two is the key uh, thought there, two. And I'm sure you see the prefix here on binomial, like a bicycle has two wheels. A binomial has two unlike terms in it. Blank is the addition or subtraction of three unlike terms. So you probably saw like tricycle, trinomial, tri triangle, is the addition or subtraction of three unlike terms. And the last one here, a poly, poly meaning many, a polynomial is multi-term expression. So if you would create these four circles in your notebook, four circles, one of them monomial, so draw four circles, one of them monomial, one of them binomial, one of them trinomial, and one of them polynomial. So make this picture in your notebook, if you would please, in your spiral. I'm going to drag some of these terms that we see over here in the right-hand box into the correct circle. I'm going to start with A plus C plus X. It has three different letters of the alphabet, three being the key idea there. That is a trinomial. 14x squared minus 3x plus 2 has three unlike terms. It has an x squared, an x, and a constant 2. That's also a trinomial. 2a minus c plus x, also a trinomial, an a, a c, and an x. Three unlike terms. I think that's it for our trinomials. I'm going to try the binomial circle. Binomial. C cubed is unlike C because they have different powers. 9C cubed plus C is an example of a binomial. 6A plus D, like six apples and a donut. Apples and a donut don't combine together, you, although you can have an apple donut, but apples and donuts are two unlike things. X, Y, and Y do not combine because one of them has an X multiplied by Y and the other one's just singular Y. 6X minus 1, two unlike terms, a variable term, 6X and the constant minus 1 there. Um, and that's it for our binomial examples. Monomial, remember, could be a product of a variable and a number, like 4c. It could be two letters multiplied together, like ac. It could be a product of numbers and variables, like 12a and b, 12 times a times b. Or it could be a product of 
a number and three variables, 36 times x times y times z, 36xyz. So those are four examples of monomials. And the only polynomial, one that has more than three unlike terms in it, is this one that's left here. It has four unlike terms. And we'll talk a little bit more about like and unlike terms. What does it mean to be like terms? First, like terms. Like terms must have the exact same variable. Not like that example that we had in the last slide where it had an x and an xy. Those are not like terms. They must have the same variable. And those variables must be raised to the same power. So not like terms is x and x squared. This is x to the first, and that's x to the second. And numbers by themselves are always added together. They are like terms, constants. So if you have 6 and 10, you could put those together and call that 16. Constants, numerical constants are um, always ones that we can add together. They are like terms. In other words, and here's a kind of a good example like the apple donuts, um, you have five horses here. I could represent that in the algebraic expression 5h plus three lions. Well, those are not like things. 5h's plus three l's does not combine to be 8HL. It is not 8HL. There's no such thing as a horse lion. So you can think of variables in the same way. Kind of give them a name. 5 horses, 5H, plus 3 lions does not equal 8 horses lions. That does not equal that. And it doesn't equal 8 horses either. So mathematically, 5 zebras and 3 yo-yos does not equal 8 zebras nor does it equal eight zebra yo-yos. There's no such thing. They have two different variables. They cannot be combined. But what would work would be five zebras and three more zebras gives you eight zebras. They have the same variables here, so when I'm combining those like terms, I just add my numerical coefficient, five and three, and I follow my integer rules. Same signs, adding eight, and I get eight zebras. Here's a little um, interactive game that we'll also see in class tomorrow. Like terms. Well, I know 4x is not like 13y, so I'm going to put that in the next column. But negative 6y is like 13y. Those could combine. And 3y is like negative 6y and 13y, and 10 is the numerical co or the constant, which I'm just going to leave in the third column. It doesn't have an x on it, and it doesn't have a y on it, so I'm putting it in separate columns. x is in the first column, y is in the second column, new numbers in the uh, number constants in the third column. I'm going to check to see that I have those right. Yep, all right. So like or unlike, um, take a moment and copy down number one, two, three. There's six of these. So if you would number your paper one, two, three, four, five, and six, you're going to decide by looking at these problems, are these like or unlike? Well, first thing I'm going to have to think about in number one, xx, it's a little rare that it's written that way. Another way this could have been written is 11x squared y. So I look at my variables. Do I have an x and an x? Yes, are they the same power? x squared, x squared. Both terms have an x squared. Both terms also have a y and a y in them. So yes, these are like terms. If you answered number one like terms, that they are like, you are correct. Number two, like number one, this has a y, y, y times y which also means I could have written this 3xy squared z, 4xy squared z. So I compare again. Number coefficients don't matter. Do they have, to be like terms, they have to have the same variable to the same power. x in the first one, 
x in the second one. y squared in the first one, y times y is y squared, y squared in the second term, z in the first term, z in the second term. If you said number two, these are like terms, you are correct. Number three. Do you think they are like or unlike? Well, let's compare. U in the first term, U in the second term. Again, the negative 3 and the negative 4, the numerical coefficients out front, do not have to be like. It's the variables to the same power have to be like. So I have a U and a U. So far, so good. A V and a V squared. Uh-oh, different powers. So that's not like w squared and then w, not like. So if you said not like for number three, you were correct. They are not like. Three more examples. Number four, 7xy and 4xy squared. x in the first term, x in the second term. y in the first term, y squared. Are they the same power? No, they are not. To be like, they have to have the same variables to the same power. So number four, if you said not like or unlike, you were correct. They are unlike. Number five, 11 TRP and negative two PRK. Well, I can see right away in number five, I have a T in the first term and a K in the second term. They have different variables. So they are not like terms. The P and the R are similar, but if they have one variable that's not the same, then they are not like terms. So number five, they are unlike. Number six, negative six x y cubed z to the fourth and negative two z to the fourth x y cubed. Well, the negative 6 and the negative 2, the numerical coefficients, again, don't matter. Let's look at our variables, one at a time. x in the first term, x in the second term. y cubed in the first term, y cubed in the second term. z to the fourth in the first term, z to the fourth in the second term. Yes, they are in a different order, but they do have, these two terms have the same variables with the same power. They are just written in different orders. I could change the order on this second one and say negative 2 x y cubed z to the fourth and put it in alphabetical order and they would still be matching. The order again does not count. It's whether or not they have the same variable to the same power. So yes, those are like terms. So how to simplify these by combining like terms? Remember, we can add horses and horses, and we can add lions and lions, but we can't add horses and lions. So number one, 14, okay, let's call it xylophones, plus five xylophones. Can you group them together and call them one thing? Yes, 14 xylophones plus five xylophones equals 19 xylophones. Now, Remember, you're just adding xylophones and xylophones. You don't want to have xylophones squared. A common error that students make is they add x and x and call it x squared. An x and an x just remains an x. Xylophones, 14 xylophones plus 5 xylophones just gives you more xylophones. Number two, 5 yo-yos minus 13 yo-yos. Well, we've got to follow our rules of integers. So I'm taking a larger number of yo-yos away from a smaller, so I know my answer is going to be negative, or changing this to keep, add the opposite, different sign, subtract. 13 take away 5 is 8 yo-yos. Keep the variable constant, and take the sign of the larger absolute value number. 5 yo-yos take away 13 yo-yos. You're short 8 yo-yos. Peanuts. Take away three peanuts. You have one peanut. That's understood to have a one in front of it. We don't have to show the one in front of a variable. One peanut, take away three peanuts. Again, 
you're taking away a larger number, keep add the opposite, you get negative two peanuts. And you don't have to um, give the variable a name like that. Now going across number four, I do have unlike variables here. I have x's and y's. So xylophones and yo-yos, don't put them together. I'm just going to put my x terms together. 3x, and yes, that's minus 2x. 3 xylophones, take away 2 xylophones. I get 1 xylophone. I can put that 1 there or not. I can just say 1x or x. My yo-yos are not going to combine with anything, so it simplifies to plus 2 yo-yos. And my positive 6 has nothing to add to it. No other numerical constants in this problem. So my only like terms that I could put together or simplify, 3x's minus 2x's gives me 1x. Again, you could say x plus 2y plus 6 or 1x plus 2y plus 6. I hope you're copying these down. Forgot to say that at the beginning. Um, number 5, w plus 14w's minus 6w's. You could call them watermelons or you could just say w's. 1w plus 14w's, that's 15w's. Take away 6w's is 9w's. They are all like terms. So I can combine all three of these together to get a total of 9 watermelons. In number 6, I see plus 4x or positive 4x plus 12x. I always look in front of the number to see that's a positive 12x or plus 12x. So 4x plus 12x. Don't be fooled by looking at that minus sign behind the 4x. Look in front of it. It's a positive 4x and a positive 12x, which gives me 16x. My negative, negative 4y's, yes, that's negative 4y's. I'm going to double underline that because that's different than my axis. So I use lines to show like things. This is a trick that I have. I underline similarly one line for the axis, two lines for the y's. So that is negative 4y plus 3y's. Negative 4y plus 3y's, different signs, subtract. 4 take away 3 is 1, and keep the sign of the larger absolute value, which is that negative 4. So I have negative 1y, negative 4y's plus 3y's combines to negative 1y. And then, don't forget you have this constant out here, and yes, plus 3, that's a positive 3. The sign in front of 3 is a positive. We don't see it. We don't always have to have positive signs, but that is positive 3. Number 7, and we're going to do some more of these a little bit at a time, so if I'm going a little too quickly here, we have a whole lesson on this tomorrow as well, putting like things together. Um, so don't be anxious about this. We're going to work on this together. 34x squared, x squared, ooh, a power on that one, is not like that minus 34x, but it is like this other 34x squared. 34x squared plus 34 more x squared gives me 68x squared. And now I have negative 34x's or minus 34x. And you could say, yes, that is negative 34x plus a negative. Add the opposite. Add the opposite. So it is negative 14x and negative 34x. Same signs, add and keep. So negative 34 and negative 14, they are like terms. Combine those coefficients, add and keep. So I get negative 48 x's. That's it for today. Um, tomorrow in class, we're going to talk more about adding algebraic terms.